This is the best map I've ever rage quit, and I'm still mad about it! This is Timescape Chronicles 2 made by Wirt Andrew. Wirt Andrew is probably my favorite map maker in the entire world. I've played almost all of his maps and everyone blows me away. Timescape Chronicles 1 came out a while ago and it was incredible. So when this map came out, I had to play it. This map is absolutely incredible. It has some of the best level design I've ever seen anywhere in any Fortnite, creative map, or even other video games. Now for some reason why I sat down to play this, I didn't really expect it to be longer than a two hour playthrough. Three and a half hours later, I was playing through the secret end levels and the difficulty level really ratcheted up and was slowly losing my mind to the point where I just couldn't handle it anymore. I really wanted to make a video about this map, but I didn't think I could edit down the three and a half hours into anything coherent. So today I've decided to do a little bit of a educational commentary. I'm gonna show you some of this map, but as I go through, I'm gonna talk about level design principles. I talk about a lot of really cool things in this video. I show off a lot of the amazing things that Wirt Andrew has done to really make his map super engaging and fun and how you can apply it into your own maps. So put on your learning caps. We're learning all about level design today. Okay, here we go guys. So first you start in this open world and you just know you have to collect a bunch of things like this all over the map. There are different places that are checkpoints and really it's just up to you to like learn where you need to go to get these items. And as you go, new places will open up. It's really, really cool. Like if I jumped in the water right now, I would die, but in the future, when I get a certain item, it makes it so I can swim. This is actually that item right here, so when I get seven blue pyramids, then I can get the backpack, which makes it so I can swim in water, which opens up more stuff in later levels. Like, that kind of level design really takes a lot of effort to kind of figure out how everything's gonna work together. Okay, so this is a portal to a different world. So this is Copper Canyon, looks awesome, and you'll see here that there are ten of the blue things in the level. Now this is another good example of great level design, is telling the player what they have to do in a certain area. But you also don't want to give away too much, which uh, Wirt also does, and I'll explain that in a little bit. So that means there's really like 10 levels in this place. Like, look, you can see in here, here's one simple level. You run up here, and then you can just jump over and get this pyramid. It's super easy. And then there's lots of areas you can go into where you start to realize, oh, here's a, another level. So really, Wirt has created a whole like death run adventure game mode, but he hasn't just put you in this little linear experience. It takes a lot more level design to do something like this, but it also makes for a much more engaging experience. So even like this, like I went into this building and I'm starting to just to jump around exploring and here I realize, oh look, here's another level. And then just take a look at these jumps guys. So you have to like slide down, this one you slide over, then you jump up here. Like this is like a really interesting parkour level. And so that just takes a little bit more effort than the typical like linear thing. Okay, over here's another great example right? You see this door, how do I get there? Like, I see I can maybe jump around on this thing and jump down, but as you explore, you start to notice, oh, look, there's like a little ledge right here that I can jump off of that I can get up on, right? And that immediately puts me over into this other, like, cool level that you slide over, trying to get up to that blue piece. So that may have been a little bit more difficult, but then you see these little caves, right? You're just having, like, a varying difficulty level for each of these pieces. So it starts to feel like a lot of variety that you would otherwise not have gotten in a linear game. And it keeps the player really engaged as they're going through this. It doesn't feel like I'm going through 10 like levels. It feels like I'm actually trying to like solve something and working on my brain to get through the different puzzles. Like this one when I was originally playing it took me a few minutes to figure out that's how you get that piece. Okay so now that I have nine pieces I can go back and get that item I was talking about earlier. See now that cage is gone and I can grab this which gives me the ability to swim in clear water. Man I love that kind of metroidvania feel where you get more powers as you go along. And then it unlocks things that you couldn't have before. Like, look, now I can swim in here, which means I can swim back here, and then I can go under, and this is unlocking. Look, now I have an orange piece, which is a whole other part of this map. When you get enough orange pieces and blue pieces, it's gonna unlock the, like, last secret level. And then speaking of secret levels, let's see here. Now, if I dive down underneath in this area, then I get taken back into this area where there's another gate where you get these, like, backwards levels. And then these are all just a little bit harder. If you want all the orange pieces, you have to go through all of this. It's actually kind of a challenge. I don't remember if I can like actually do these. Come on! 
Ooh. Let's see if I can actually do this one on the first try. Oh my gosh. Yeah, these are a little bit harder. So then when you come out of that, then you can just bounce back into like the normal part of the map that you were at before. Like this is all really well planned out and it's starting to make for a really highly engaging map. Okay, so let's move on. So now that we're out here in this area, there's more places that I can go. Like even back here behind that level, there's a really secret like little area you can come swim in and this is like timed. You gotta be really quick uh, if you don't wanna die. Oh, I was lucky to get that guys. It took me like four or five tries to get to that before. But as you start running around, you start to see new things like, look, here's another one of those cages that you need 40 of the blue things to open. That actually ends the game of the like normal mode. But you'll see here, oh, that's blocked off. I can't get over there yet. So I may as well swim over here where the next level is. Now, this is kind of forcing a little bit more of a linear pattern, but it still feels open world to the player. So this is now another level where I need to find 10 of the blue pieces. And then there are more of the orange pieces as well but you'll see right over here i get another like power where i have a battery pack that can like power up charge stations you'll see what i mean in a little bit so once again this is all really well designed to kind of lead the player through the map and this one uses a lot of these lily pads and i you know honestly i haven't used a lot of li lily pads in different maps or i haven't even seen them in maps too much but he uses them in a really ingenious way to really lead the player along the pathway what i mostly love about this whole like area is that it forces you to like really explore your surroundings to get to where you want to go like there's another piece in this house, but this is the only way to get in there. If I can actually get in! Oh, there we go. And then you just crouch down, and now you can parkour your way up to get over to this blue piece. There's just a lot of that kind of thing. And look, there's even that. You can get back out easily, a way you could never get in by. You may be thinking to yourself, wow, this is way too challenging. And which may be the case. Not everyone's gonna be up for, you know, a super, like, difficult, you know, challenge like this. But really what this is doing is adding replay ability to his map. Basically what I mean by that is now people can come back and explore this whole map trying to unlock all the secrets that it holds. What you most want to do is give your players a lot to do. That way you're going to get more than that one play or you know people are going to try and speed run it or they're going to see someone do a video on it and want to go and do it themselves. It's all about that level design that's going to entice people to play more often. Okay now remember that little like battery pack that I got? Well that charged this which makes it now that I can run over here and get over to the castle that's on the other side of the map. So once again, this is really great level design, making it so I have to solve my way through the map. Okay, and then I come into the castle and here's yet another awesome new power-up. So now outside the castle, there's these little like pads that make it so you can glide and now I can get pieces like this. So once again, I could see that piece the whole time from the very beginning, but I could never get to it until I got that power-up and now more areas are accessible to me. Now here's a little spoiler alert. The, there's this giant tower here that I got to the actual secret level at the end without even going in. Like where it said that there's some super secret stuff in there that uh, I, I never figured out how to get to. Which entices me and makes me want to come back and play it. Well, this level is absolutely insane guys. And I had a, a little bit of a struggle with this level. Like just trying to figure out what to do. This one's definitely more hard on the brain for me. But uh, like there's even this one. So like here's a good example like right over here I can fly over and get this piece and I can avoid this whole level now I don't know if that was intentional but I kind of love that it was there mostly because it just kind of like shows that I, there's more ways to figure this out than just one okay I'm gonna head on over to this other level right here because this has some really interesting level design on it so I ran around this place for a long time and I really struggled to find this area right here I was missing one piece and this is the area that I finally found eventually so this is one thing that's really cool right so how is your map gonna stand apart from others, right? Maybe it's using some sort of mechanism that you've never seen before. Have you ever seen someone use those like that before? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it exists in some other map somewhere, but I've never seen it before. And when I saw this, I was blown away. I also spent forever trying to like hit this bear and I don't know why, but I eventually got through this area. There's a bunch of these buttons throughout the map that eventually unlocks yet another like special area. Now, one of my favorite little areas is right up here. So you jump in here and then you start to slide down and you trigger this little thing and then you're getting chased this whole time ah what 
look, look, it's coming. <laughs> oh no, ah, I got killed. But now that's activated this here at, a, at another point in this level that now I have to avoid. And it's like turning on and off those lights throughout the rest of the map, which I absolutely love. And yet again, here's another area that you realize you need a power up to get to. And there's the power up right there. So I'm just really in love with the level design here and how, oh, this is another cool one. You gotta beat this before it gets to the door. Uh, otherwise, oh wait, oh yeah, it opens it right at the end and then you can get through. Like, yeah, that's cool. Like, I've never seen that in another map. Okay, this is the last button I need to do to unlock the last, like, power up. Okay, so here it is. I've unlocked this, which is a tele-backpack, which means now I can, like, teleport to these new areas, which I love because now I can do all of these levels that I couldn't do before, not just here, but in past levels that I was in before. So I think that is great level design in that that I have to remember where I've been and what was happening on other levels. I'm gonna show you an example. So I, there is a place back in this cloud city over here that I couldn't get to before. So see, now this is opened up. And so now I can get up higher where I couldn't get up here before. So I love that part of this whole map that I have to remember what I've done and where I've been in order to get to where I want to be. That sounds really deep, guys. It's not that deep. <laughs> but I do wanna show you like the end goal here. So once you have all the stuff you need you got to come over here and I found a little cheat on this level you can just kind of like bounce on this and hold forward and you can bounce over to this blue one but eventually once you get over here you jump on this guy and then you can fly up here oh don't overshoot it Woo! Okay, you come up here and you can see you can unlock this door when you have 40 blue ones and 16 orange ones. And when you go through this, you will get to a magical end like level. And they're super hard, guys. That's where I rage quit last time. So now I can come here, grab this. Aha, we're a winner! But uh, our high score is not the high score. So you would want to go back and replay it to really find everything that's in the game. Amazing map, great level design, really taught me a lot just playing it. And hopefully I can improve my levels from here on out.